All right, hey guys. Today I wanted to talk about an extremely confusing subject uh, for myself and for a lot of developers out there, I think, in the Swift community, um, which is generics and protocols, interfacing generics with protocols, how to conform or create custom types that conform to these protocols like equatable, hashable, uh, custom string convertibles, um, etc. Uh, and, and even creating your own ones with operator overloading. Um, and that's a more advanced topic, you know, beyond the scope of this video. But for all intents and purposes, uh, Swift is an extremely type safe language, which means it enforces types uh, at compile time and at runtime, um, where if you don't put in the correct type, you're not even going to be able to run or build your application. Um, and, and what I mean by that is if I have uh, a function, let's just say I have a generic function that just says uh, add, OK? And I uh, have x is a number, and it's going to be of type integer. And let's just say it returns an integer, right? And I just say return x uh, plus 5, right? OK. What I mean by compile time, and uh, even before it's running, you'll notice that if I start typing in add and I want to use this function, it forces me to put an integer in there, right? So if I put in a string like apple, I'm going to get a huge error. And I'm not going to be able to compile my application at all. That's because, like I said, it's a, it's a type safe language that is checking constantly. So the only way for me to satisfy this would be to put in an integer in here. Um, not a float, but an integer. Um, and that's because of these type declarations that it uses. Um, but what's really cool in Swift is something or a topic uh, that's called generics, uh, which allows you to expand upon this. So for example, so let's say I want to write a function where I don't know what type I'm going to put in. I don't know. I just want to be able to have a function that any developer on my team can use to check if something's equal. That, this is going to be like the most basic example. It's just checking equality for right now, because this is an extremely complicated universe out here in generics. Uh, but let's just say we had a function. Uh, and uh, we want to say check if equal, OK? And so we need to check, basically, uh, a couple different things. Uh, one is our first value, which will be of a type, and a second value which will be of a type. We don't know what these types are right right now. We just know that we want to be able to check it. And we want to return a Boolean. We do know that type, OK? That's the one type we know. OK, so how do we make this so that we can put in any type in here? Uh, well, it's, it's kind of easy, actually, if you think about it. Uh, we have to use angle brackets in front of our function, or right after our function name, but before the parentheses. And we need to put in some sort of generic placeholder. It's just a letter. It could be a name. It could be an, uh, I don't think it can be a number, but I think it can be uh, it can definitely be a string. You could say like dictionary. You could say uh, element. You could say number. You could say anything. I'm going to use T because T is what Apple uses for generics, uh, and it's it means of generic type. And you'll notice that everywhere I put T here, I'm going to use that same type. So when I say T, 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 and I don't know why I put these angle brackets here. Sorry. <laughs> um, that means that it's going to be of this type T, OK? Um, and so it's complaining right now because I haven't returned an equality. Um, so if I return to check, you know, just x is x equal to y, um, I should get equality. Now I'm going to get a compile time error here, or I'm going to get a, a, an error. And it's going to say binary operator equal equal, which is what we're using here to compare these values, x and y, which are of this generic type T, which can really be anything. Um, cannot be applied to t. OK, why is that? Well, Swift doesn't know what t is right now. If it was an integer, it would know I can compare two types, right? Compare an integer to an integer. If it's an, uh, in a string, I can compare a string to a string. But it doesn't know what a t is, because you haven't defined it. It doesn't know anything about it. So you have to kind of help it a little bit, the compiler. You have to say where uh, t, which is our type, and uh, use a colon is equatable. And well, what is equatable? Uh, equatable is uh, it's a protocol, and there's several protocols Apple actually has given to us for free, actually, uh, which returns a Boolean value indicating whether two values are equal. That should say enough for you right here. Is a equal to b? Is a not equal to b? So they provide us a static function, which is of equal equal to self of LHS and RHS. This is left hand side and right hand side and returns a Boolean. So it's basically saying their function is this and it um, 
evaluates the left hand side and the right hand side and returns if it's true. And that's basically what we did right here is we created this generic function which evaluates our right hand side here and our left hand side and returns if it's true. So if I do check, right, uh, check if equal, I get these T's, right, which is really nice. And I can put any type I want in here. I can put a string, for example. I could say uh, apple, and uh, I'll just say apple for now. And this should return true. We'll see return true over here on the right. Now, if I change this, you know, the right hand side to orange, obviously it's false. You'll get a false. That's kind of cool, right? OK, so how can we expand upon that? So we can create these generic functions where we're going to drop in these placeholder types. Why wouldn't I do that for everything? Why wouldn't I just start creating every single function that I ever write to do that? Well, the reason is, is it's, it doesn't make sense to use generics, to me at least, um, unless they are uh, encapsulated in a protocol, which I'll show you how to do in a second, um, or unless it makes sense to use them unless they um, are doing a very specific thing. So for example, if I'm writing a function that's going to map over a range or a dictionary, and it's going to apply some function to that. Maybe I don't care what the type is. It can be any object that I'm going to use in that map function and, or that flat map when I'm going to do something. Um, so I'll use a generic type in that. But if I'm going to maybe move a view across the screen in an animation block, I wouldn't want to use a closure that uses generics or a function that uses generics because I know I need to use it of type UI view. And I don't want someone to just pass in any random thing in there, like a Boolean. That wouldn't make sense or work, even though it will compile. So you kind of have to be careful. Um, so that being said, um, how do we adhere these to types? So let's create a custom type. This will be a custom object. I'm just going to use like an airplane, I think, I want to say. It's like there's an airplane that went over my house right now, and it was kind of loud. And that's what I'm thinking about. Um, OK, so we have this airplane. OK, cool. So we can do a few different things. We can start defining variables directly in here. We can even conform this class to the equatable protocol, which is going to say, OK, cool. Uh, if we conform to this class, cool, where's my static function it's going to ask for? Because remember, the equatable protocol forces you to implement this static function. So if I put this in here, I'll show you right now really quickly. This compile time error will go away. Um, but self is not defined, so it doesn't know self is an airplane. So you have to actually say self here is an airplane instead of self. And then I can just uh, return here uh, the left-hand side, LHS is equal to RHS, right? And that will, that will get rid of that error. Um, but to me, I think it kind of butchers up this object. So it's a little bit cleaner and nicer to adhere uh, custom types to and generics inside of protocols. So let's create a protocol up here, and we'll call this, uh, I don't know, airplane protocol. OK. And uh, in our airplane protocol, we're going to adhere this to the equatable protocol. OK. And I didn't show you guys, but if you go in here, scroll down, this is uh, this is part of the actually the Swift source uh, equatable. We have to implement this, but we can also check is not equal. We can do a few different other things. Is it triple equals? There's also something called comparable, which is nice, which is from of type equal. Uh, and we can do things like, okay, let's check if it's less than, if it's less than equal, if it's greater than equal, if it's greater than, um, et cetera. And there's one called uh, hashable. If we you know, are going to use a dictionary or read it through a hash map or something like that. And then there's also text output streams. And this is from like debugging and prints, custom string convertibles or descriptions. We'll use this one. This one's kind of cool. So let's uh, let's throw on a custom string convertible here. We can um, basically adhere to as many of these as we want. We can create our own ones as well with operator overloading, like I was talking about earlier. Um, and you'll see as soon as we do this, it's thrown in error because uh, a couple different things. One, we're not implementing, um, I'm sorry, this needs to be a comma. One, we're not implementing uh, or adhering as equatable should to um, the static function. And then the other one is that we're not implementing this var description, which is of string get. So if I go back here and um, I can start actually just typing 
uh, let's say var description. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be custom string convertible, not custom debug string convertible. And we can define this as a get. Um, and this has to actually be description. I'm sorry. Like that. Okay. So that was talking pointing like that. Um, so that allows me to append anything that this airplane protocol adheres to, which in a second we're going to adhere this object that we're creating to this airplane protocol. And it's going to ask us to implement all this stuff. Um, but also to get equatable to function correctly and, and test if this object is equatable, we need to also implement uh, the static uh, func, which is equal, equal. I just forget it. It's uh, RHS, LHS. Yeah, that one. This. So we can just drop this actually directly in here like that. And then we should be able to check if it's equal. So how do we do that? So now let's say we have this object, right? And we're going to adhere this to airplane protocol. Okay. And we know that based on defining these um, requirements in our protocol, we can now, we're basically encapsulating this functionality into our airplane object. It's going to say, okay, we need to implement our descriptive string, which is this, which is a get only string. So once it's initialized with our string, we can't basically do anything else. And then the other thing it's saying that we're not doing yet is we're not conforming to the equatable protocol. Okay, well, we need to implement this static function to equate to. So um, you can remove this internal references because you don't need those. Um, but it's asking us to do something here. And that is to evaluate again our left hand side. Uh, yeah, our left hand side is equal to our right hand side, right? And then our air should go away. Awesome. So now let's create two objects. I'll just say um, let airplane one equal this airplane. And if I use a constructor, you notice how it wants the debug description or the description name. I can pass in airplane one, and I could say let airplane, airplane two, so type airplane description, and I'll just say this is airplane two, right? Like that. Now I can use this check if equal function up here. So I can say check if equal, Boom, airplane one, is it equal to airplane two? And we should get no, false. So what's really cool about this, and, and actually, <laughs> you notice how nothing prints out over here? The reason is, is because, okay, you're just comparing object to objects. It's Swift is, doesn't understand. So what can we use in here? Well, we can say description. Right, because the description is what we declared. If we had something else in the initializer like color, model, type, class, etc., then um, then it would maybe it would it would understand. It or sorry, it wouldn't understand. So this kind of encapsulates the functionality of equatable and of these protocols um, into your own custom protocols that then you have to adhere to your object. So that. Um, and what is this? Yeah, okay, sorry guys. Yeah, I think there was some sort of weird Xcode error there for a second where it wasn't checking the equality. So the equality is obviously different. Now remember, if I change this to one, this will evaluate to true because they're the same. They're based on the description. So you can have your own custom implementations. Now what's also cool is if I wanted to find more characteristics about this airplane, I can do it all directly inside of the protocol. Um, and I could just say, you know, this is a string and I want to be able to get set this. Um, and I could say maybe like uh, size um, and we'll say this is an integer. Um, and I want to get and set this. And then I can start adding them back down here. So as soon as watch, as soon as I added these, it's going to complain and say these are not in here down here. So I can drop these guys in. And remember, you can dump these internals. And um, and then that's it. And then in my initializers, it's going to throw an error because of them not being initialized. So I can 
back this out, open that up, and then I have this default initializer. I'm gonna copy it and just use it here. And I'm just gonna say uh, 1050 feet. This color will be, uh, we'll just say red, and our description is, what is it, airplane one? And we'll say for the second one, uh, this is 2,000 feet, this is blue, and this one is airplane two, right? And remember, we're still checking equality on the description, but I can check equality on the size, the color, and then whatever properties I wanted to actually use. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this kind of teaches you guys a little bit about how generics work and how you can adhere them to custom types, drop them in protocols, drop them in actual, you can even adhere this entire structure to one. I can even do it inside here in these types if I wanted to. Just remember uh, that when you do it, um, make sure that you're conforming to the correct types, otherwise you're gonna have issues. All right, I hope that helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments, or if you want a copy of this code, let me know and I'll post it on GitHub. All right, have a great day.